A very good evening to you. I hope you've been having a wonderful day. We are coming to you live from Nairobi, Kenya. I hope you have power from where you are because the rains have been raining down on Nairobi. The whole of Kenya has been powerless. So we are coming to you live from the studio here in Nairobi, Kenya. And my name is Cheryl Blessing and this is the Power Talk Show. Now on this show, we usually have conversations that directly impact you and improve your life in one way or another. This show particularly, we want to focus on relationships and marriages because most of us are in long-term relationships. We are in marriages and we want to understand how we can be better partners, how we can improve our personal relationships. So we are talking about toxic marriages and toxic relationships. When do you know it's becoming toxic? How can you tell that your relationship is getting toxic? And joining me live on set are two professionals who are really well versed with this conversation and they are here to give us some insight on the conversation. We are starting with Juliet Kikunda, who is a child psychologist. Karibu sana. Thank you so much, Blessing, for having me here. Yeah. Um, it's the light thing to do and discuss because we need to have clear goals yeah. as we're setting Hali to get even to the marriage. That's and with the Reverend is able to help us. I'm sure he has been in marriage for quite a long time <laughs> and I am. <laughs> yeah. So I'm even also here to run. To and we are the light praise, yes. Thank you. Thank you. And as Juliet has said, that's Reverend right next to her. We have Reverend Evan Scocho, who is not a guest here. Both of our guests today have been here before, so they're part of the Power Talk family. Yeah. Karibu Tena. Thank you, pleasure. Nice yeah. to see you again. It's been a while. It's been a long time. I look forward for this conversation. I'm so excited, personally, yeah. Yeah. because I believe so many people are dealing with so many things within their relationships mm -hmm. and their marriages, which they do not understand, that these matters are toxic. They're detrimental to their health and the overall well-being of the family at large. Yeah. So I want us to tackle this conversation and I want to hear from you back at home as well. I want you to tell me how can you tell or how do you know when a relationship is becoming toxic? Go on our social media platforms at Y254 and share your thoughts, share your opinions. If you have a personal experience, we'd like to hear that from you as well. So you can go on our socials and we will sample the comments as we progress with the conversation. And I think I, I want to kickstart the conversation from the point of understanding what toxic marriage or relationships are. These days we like to throw around the word toxic. This person is toxic, this situation is toxic, but I don't know if we truly understand what toxicity means. So Reverend, could you give us your perception? What do you think toxic implies? Well, uh, the word toxic is simply poisonous, lethal, dangerous, unhealthy. So when you talk about uh, toxic relationship, it's a relationship that is, there is no health, there is no freedom, there is anticipated death. Because when it is becoming poisonous, Eventually, one or both will either first of all die spiritually, then eventually it might bring a lot of uh, other, you know, problems. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a relationship that is not healthy, a relationship that one is not appreciated, a relationship that one has no voice, or both, a relationship that one is not having freedom to express himself or herself. When those things are happening, then you know this one is toxic, this one is poisonous, this one is killing, this one is dangerous. Yeah. I like that because yeah. you've said it's poisonous. Yeah. And as we know, poison kills. Yeah. Poison will take you out. Akuna rumia manini. It just immediately mm. takes you out. Mm. So it's something that you've said kills you spiritually and then yeah. it comes to manifest in the physical. Mm. So it's something that is long term it will kill you in one way or another exactly yeah mm -hmm. juliet what can you add to that i could just and or not here says that it's something also that affects Im your emotional being mm -hmm. something that drives off your happiness a sense mm -hmm. of belonging that as a sometimes 
you feel yourself you're drawing uh, back to something that you're never used to be something that is taking even your negative your positive energy to be negative energy every time you just feel kuna uh, kitu is not connecting you well because lack of sleep so many things will be affected in you as i just mentioned earlier it starts from spiritual and it can be emotional then it drains you back and then it's become more, even more physical so it's something that affects the who we have something that's become even very unconducive for you to be there but we sense it and we feel it because yeah. god has given us that grace to feel and sense that's right you know? that's true yeah. Yeah. and i like that because yeah. we have to focus on the killing aspect because mm -hmm. when we think about toxic in our minds we think about those ex <laughs> you know yes. when we see the toxic barrels with waste and things like that yeah. it will kill you mm -hmm. it is hazardous to your body mm -hmm. it is hazardous to your health mm -hmm. yeah. Juliet you've expounded by saying mm -hmm. it will kill even emotionally mm -hmm. because these are aspects that are present in a relationship a relationship has the spiritual the mm -hmm. emotional and the physical aspect yeah. mm -hmm. so all of that mm -hmm. is compounded to make even a marriage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but now i wonder do relationships start off as toxic or do they become toxic do they start if it's abusive does it start off as abusive or does it develop to become abusive reverend what would you say to that maybe that would uh, first of all uh, lead us to look at the causes what is the cause of toxicity in a relationship or in a marriage because these things begin somewhere yeah. and before we come to the place of marriage or uh, to a covenant of relationship it means something began somewhere first these things begin from um, an addressed uh, stresses traumas issues wrong or bad upbringing this a particular young boy that was raised up in a very violent environment seeing his father beating his mother in front of them and then later growing knowing that okay these type of people you must beat them you must insult them you must handle them weirdly to be a real man so when somebody is growing from that environment somebody is coming from uh, a background of uh, unmanaged egos then this thing will build up and cause a foundation a root a strong root for toxicity in uh, a particular individual then uh, you will realize later that when this person is uh, begin to engaging somebody in a relationship actually these things may will manifest early mm. it is only our generation that are handling relationship like a conductor or a manamba <laughs> uh, putting people in a matatu for kayole 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 they want to work they want to do in uh, in hurry yeah. as if jesus is coming back tomorrow and all the beautiful girls are going to heaven <laughs> and <laughs> all, all the, the ones that are going to remain are ugly men mm -hmm. so they want to handle relationship. I, i wonder how you can just get to know somebody today and uh, before the end of the day you are in love Yeah. Before the end of the day this person is not called Juliet is darling. Babe. Babe. Hey, babe. Sorry, all those things. I miss your smile. And I miss your smile. <laughs> Love I, of my life. Meeting first day. <laughs> And first before day, you, before you know it house is not yeah, done. Before you know it tomorrow they're in hotel in Mombasa. Before you know it they're planning a wedding next month. Yeah. These people didn't have time to know. I need to know who is Juliet. Juliet needs to know who is Evans. Yeah. And then when we are coming in, I, I, I shall have known who this person is. I shall have known if this person is having this level of toxicity, am I able to manage? So this thing comes from somewhere and we need to address the place of upbringing and parenting, the place of uh, unmanaged egos, uh, stresses, traumas that are not dealt with. These things will eventually manifest in a relationship in one day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's true. I like that you've brought up even parenting because last yeah. week we were having a conversation on the transformation of parenting, mm -hmm. how it's changed from the way it was maybe yeah. 20 50 years ago yeah. to how it is presently. Mm -hmm. And we noticed that the discipline aspect has been lost. Mm -hmm. And you've also brought about the childhood mm -hmm. being a very important aspect. Mm -hmm. Now Juliet, being a child psychologist, what is the impact of the upbringing and the childhood of someone? to them as an adult 
So thank you so much, uh, Blessing. One of the key things we need to note, as you're saying, how foundation of everything matters. Even when you're building a house, mm -hmm. foundation is the key thing. Yeah. So if it means, if I'm bringing up Paul Evans, when he's bringing up the foundation of shaken. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, as this foundation is coming up and there's no repair, there's no one that says something is wrong somewhere and something needs to be done. That's right. Then at the end of the day, even if we build to fifth floor, sixth floor, if we didn't build with the strongest foundation, it will clash Campbell. down. Yeah. If Julie is not dealt with from the foundation and the underlying issues, it is affecting our society. And it's one of the key things I'll mention, like, uh, I'll be so keen to mention that we have so much focused on the girl child empowerment. To an extent, that is when we are realizing also the boy child in an empowerment. Yes. If, we, if we, bring up, we, we are bringing up a broken man, a broken boy who is crying for identity, a boy who doesn't even know who I am, who are my lords, who are my fathers, as in, he doesn't even know how to be a man. Yeah. You're just trying to be a man in a society. Mm -hmm. And everyone is telling you, you need to man up, you need to be a man. No one has shown you how to be a man. Yeah. So what happened? He need to find his ways. And sometimes you'll be told being a man is being a detector in that relationship. Being a man is being a woman, you just need not to be told by any woman, by any man to submit. Mm -hmm. So the basic keys, even I was talking to parents over this, or I was telling them, the foundation we are creating is what to bring up to this society we are bringing up. That's right. Yeah. And so, so much of time we need to know that our cry for acceptance is leading us to draw in waters that we are looking for identity. Mm -hmm. And these waters are the waters that will make us to become, to have aden an identity. Mm. in our life. There is a cry inside us. There is a cry in every child. If it is not yet meant and dealt with, we become the monster. We become somebody that we never wanted to be. Mm. Because you're trying to figure out yourself without direction. Yes. And we all know without direction, you can very easily get lost. Yes. Even a car on the yes. road without direction, you don't know where you're going. Because yes. you might have an idea, I want to get to Nakuru but you don't know what route or whatever or the best way to get there. Mm -hmm. So direction is very important. Yes. The foundation that you lay mm. is very, very important. Mm. Now you've both brought up very interesting uh, matters, especially regarding the times today. Reverend, you've talked about the way people are quick to date, quick to fall in love. People have love of my life, come out five of them. <laughs> and, and you wonder which, which is the genuine love of your life. And Juliet has also brought about the fact that men have been neglected. Men have been told you need to man up. Women are overpowered. Women are overpowered. They're, you know, it's not even empowerment. <laughs> <laughs> it has gone beyond. Because some women believe yeah. they are men. Mm -hmm. yeah. Believe that not even just men in the, the sense of gender identity. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell that woman anything. Yeah. Because I know... I have the money, I have the security, so what, what are you offering? I have my passport, I have my ID. You know, uh, I have the yeah. experience, so <laughs> that is the problem. So do you yeah. think it's because of the change in times mm. that have deeply affected relationships? Or did we have toxic relationships still present in the past? This thing was there. It's mm. not uh, a current thing. It's not a current demon. It was there. Even in the days, long days in the Bible, it was there. Mm. Um, I think what uh, Juliet brought is a very fundamental factor to consider, more so in our society. Foundation matters. God himself runs this planet not on miracles, not on money, not on economy of the country, but on principles. There are principles that gives birth to possibilities, possibilities. And, uh, and miracles and everything. When a principle is ignored, or when a principle is breached, the whole thing turns to be poisonous. Mm. And uh, I like the idea of empowering women. You know, that was good because sometimes back I grew up when women had no voice. Yeah. And uh, thank God for the empowerment. Uh, thank God for uh, uh, the, the place they went, uh, the Geneva, and all those things and uh, where they have gone for empowerment. But you see, that cannot interfere with the original plan of God. Women, including the two that I have in this show today, were created to be one step below the man. And any time they breach that principle, the whole thing turns weird. 
That's why nowadays we have this narrative you hear about uh, what a man can do, <laughs> can a do woman can do. But I can tell you, oh, okay, I agree 50 with that statement. But I can tell you, there are so many things a woman can do. When the dog is barking outside at night, <laughs> who will go to check on that? Yeah. Will you tell one. Madame Juliet, come on, honey, go just go and check. Go and check. Uh, oh, you know, you, you can, can do, do better. better. You can <laughs> do better. <laughs> you cannot do that. So we have uh, somehow interfered with the original plan of God. Now, I think what we also need to look at, uh, my sister, is um, before we <coughs> come to complain, there will always be these red flags. Yeah. Yeah, the, you'll always see these things, early signs manifesting. Mm -hmm. And you'll see, okay, this person I cannot manage. Or yeah. you just go knowing I'm admitting a problem. I'm not marrying a man or I'm not, not marrying a woman. I'm marrying sickness. Mm -hmm. I'm going to build a big hospital in my home to nurse my sick person. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, you know, these things will manifest. Because uh, just to mention a few. These people, one, you will always see them by the way they are very dictatorial. Mm. They always want to have their way in whatever discussion that we're having. They are not apologetic. Mm -hmm. They are ever and always right, and their words are final. If they tell you, honey, let's meet uh, a town around four, and uh, you say, oh, no, four? I'll still be at work. Can we do it at 5.30? They say, no, no, then you don't love me. Then you don't love <laughs> me. When you begin to see such kind of things, don't ignore them as jokes. Mm. Those are clear signs enough to tell you, think again. Yeah. God has several ways of telling you no. Mm. God will not just tell, uh, send an angel, climb on a mango tree and call you by your name, Juliet. Juliet, mm. I'm Jehovah God of heaven. Mm -hmm. I'm saying no, no. God has several ways, including how characters of people around you will manifest to you. Mm -hmm. You'll definitely see and say, this one is a no-go zone. Mm. Yeah. And I like that because, you know, so many people talk about red flags mm. and there are some people who are like, no, but red is my favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand that, <laughs> especially if you're getting into marriage with this yeah, person, yeah, yeah. it will impact you long term. Yeah. 20 years later, you'll still be dealing with the same and even exactly. worse than what you're exactly. dealing with currently. Mm -hmm. It's just reminded me of a story I came across mm. about this lady. The husband lost a job mm. and then she took care of the bills for 30 days. So <laughs> it's not so many bills. Yeah. But after 30 days, mm. she said enough is enough. Mm. I'm filing for divorce. I am leaving. I, am, I can't be with a man who is mm. not a provider. Mm. He needs to know what he signed up for. Mm. If he can't perform the role, I need to go and find better. Yeah. That brought me to what you were talking about. Mm. The fact that as much as women are empowered, mm. there is some form of, we've missed some information mm. for the men as well. Mm. So we are probably being empowered, mm. but not understanding that in marriage, in a family setup, mm. in a relationship, there are balances that you have to, to keep in check. Mm. There are gender roles that you have to play to sustain the marriage and mm. the relationship. That's right. Juliet, do you think women need to learn something from maybe the women who were there in the past as much as the way reverend has said those are time when women didn't have a voice yeah. we are very fortunate to live in a time and an era where people can speak up and voice their opinions and be heard yeah. and actually create an impact right. but can we learn something from the women who are creating homes and raising children yeah. from back in maybe 1950 1920 yes blessing we can do but I need to disagree to agree with, uh, with Evans with one thing. That has been one of the clear things even when I've de been dealing with parent and issues about relationship coming up. Uh, when you look at Corinthians, it's speaking about uh, husband and wife. And one of the key things that comes first is the husband supposed to love and lead. Because you're supposed to show the example as in kuongoza. Kuongoza. Yes, mm. leadership. Yeah. Mm. And then as women, we are supposed to f submit. Mm. So these are two clear laws that guide even in marriage. Maybe let's not so even talk about relationship. Mm. And this is a key thing that I'll tell you. It is having an issue in our current relationship and marriage. Where a woman lack leadership, who shall she submit to? Yeah. That is true. If this, if this boy of this man was not mentored on 
shown how to read or brought mm. up to be the man in the house. Not a dictator man, but a man who can converse, a man who can sit down in dialogue, a man who can discuss issues and plan together and be the end of the family. Mm. Show example. Mm. This woman and love, because I'm telling you, bracing when a woman is well loved, submission becomes very easy. Mm. You can tell her to go where she'll go west. When you guide her, this is Honey, this is what I want us to discuss, this is what I want us to do. So this is what happens. If there's lack in this marriage, in this relationship, then the woman take over. Yeah. And I want the woman to take over. Yes. Everything goes. Yeah. It goes Mercy. Yeah. It goes That's so true because, you know, there's the aspect of yeah. a man is not a leader in the home. You have to wait and decide, so where are we moving to? Three months later, Badoa Jamwa. Yes. So you have to take charge and decide. So there is that aspect also bringing us back to the lack of mentorship. Yes. And as you know, the Christ gave a very clear example. He gave by being and doing and leading. And he said, as I do, do the do same. Do the same. And the men are supposed to be like that because he's the groom of the church. So do you think also Christianity, faith, and culture really plays a role in molding men to becoming the leaders of the home? Uh, Juliet is right that uh, when, whenever there is no leadership, there is a chaotic situation already. Uh, and this is why I go back to what I said earlier. When the foundation is not laid properly, then uh, this will one day affect the entire thing. Uh, foundation of womanhood or manhood is not being able to make a woman pregnant or being able to produce a child. Mm -hmm. It begins from parenting. Now, when we talk about parenting, one thing that our generation, par our, the parents of our generation must understand, this generation learn things not from the things they hear but from the things they see. They yeah. want to see how you are handling their mother. Yeah. They'll grow up knowing, oh, okay, this is how women yeah, should be handled. <laughs> yeah. We should add the sound yeah. effects of yeah. clapping. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they want to see how you handle their mother. They want to see how you handle them. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, when you have kids, this is how you handle kids. Uh, parenting is not about producing food and everything and making sure there's <coughs> good Netflix and the Wi-Fi is at home. Those are just additional advantages, but there yeah. are pillars go uh, governing parenting. I must be seeing a man in this young man. I must tell this young man, this is how we live. This is how we live. And I'm not just telling, I'm also showing, showing how we must live. Yeah. And if I fail there, that is where we raise, uh, we raise mama's boys. I posted something on Facebook last week, uh, but one which was very controversial, that you can meet a boy at 40 and a man at 23. Mm. That's, true. That's true. Somebody is at 40, but it's a boy. The Bible says that a man should not be alone, not a boy. Boys are allowed to be alone. But so boys, we are boys at 50. He's 50, but the boy doesn't know. Any mistake, single mistake, should be in a kwa mingi kwa mayai. Mom, lewa manimaliza. kema. And this is why this woman will now try to balance in between being a woman and being a man. Yeah. And by doing that, a lot of messages are going to be there. And before you know it, the family is collapsed. So I agree that when there is no proper leadership, even in the Bible, the Bible says that because there was no man to till the ground, God could not cause anything to grow. Mm. Where there is leadership, there is growth. Yeah. So I agree with that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I like that because as you've, you've clearly pointed out, mm. foundations, uh, th we th have Then you say something about uh, the church, uh, spiritual uh, yes. nurturing. I agree with you. It is the duty of a church also to nurture. Recently, I was having the teenagers between the age of 10 to 17. I sat down with them. I was asking them, you've been in this church, you were born in this church. What do you think salvation is all about? Mm. Some of them don't even know. True. Some of them will tell you they know everything, but they are not saved, including my own daughter. Was there telling me about everything about salvation, but he's not saved. He's only saying praise the Lord because he goes to church and he hears people saying praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So the church should play a key role in making sure 
that these people are grown into men, these people are grown into women. The Bible says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So uh, you don't become a wife by you know, coming to the bedroom that first night of the honeymoon. You become a wife first before you go to the honeymoon. And this, the church has a role to play in nurturing these people spiritually. And in all-around all woman, all-around man should be bathed by the church. The church is the midwife of the man and the woman in our society. Mm. Yeah. I like that. Because mm. yeah. on what you say. Yes, um, please. About the being the key leading thing, mm -hmm. I mentioned something. I was doing an article, and I said one of the key things I interact mostly with teenagers mm -hmm. and the youths. One of the key thing you note, like now the current situation we have, how children do not pick like. Do as I say, not like I do. Mm. It's a monkey see, monkey do. So I experience a, a situation whereby someone will ask you, but I didn't see my dad doing that. Mm -hmm. My yeah. mom never used to do that. Mm -hmm. As in, who are you to question me? I come late even as an adult in my house now, in my mom's house. Mm. She couldn't ask me. Yeah. As a girl, she was like, I used to party and come back to my parent home at. Twelve. She never to has to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know. Mm. So who are you and to ask the me to be in the house? Yeah. So and you know, unfortunately, it's the reality of today. Yes. Mm. Because of technology, because of the empowerment as well, mm. because we're bringing up a new generation. Mm. The generation is not the type that you beat them mm. and they're afraid for the next three years. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's you will beat them and they will ask you, why did you beat me? Mm. Justify that. And then explain to me why what I did was wrong. Mm. And they go to the Google, they check yeah. Google. And they will confirm. Ten signs of toxic parents. <laughs> parents. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know. <laughs> and that is the generation that we are bringing. Yeah. Currently, yeah. those are the kids that are there presently. Yeah. So we need to be very careful about what we show them. Mm. You know, sometimes people think kids don't see. Mm. Kids don't listen. Yeah. But they are very alert. They are very aware. The way you speak to each other at dinner, mm. the way you come home, the way you treat, the small, small things. Because yeah. yeah. the minute they see, Mama na shinanga jikoni, Dada meka meka meza, meka mbuko meza na gazeti. So unbothered. They will emulate that. Because they won't believe you're supposed to have balance. Mm. They're like, no, but I didn't see that. Mm. You, it will be hard for them to relate the two. Mm -hmm unless they have the experience. Mm. So let's briefly, before we go on a break, briefly mm. just touch on what we term as toxic and what we term as healthy. Mm. So maybe Juliet, you can give us uh, some examples of a toxic marriage or some traits that can come up that are toxic in a marriage. So one of the key thing, if you see like there's a repetitive of a certain partner, like uh, not partner, patterns. Mm. Patterns yeah. that keep on repeating like this person keep on lying and one of the key things that uh, Evan said is this person become unapologetic, not yeah. remorseful. As in, unazafanya chenye utataka, utadu. As in, you express yourself and tell this person you hurt me, you did this one, two, three, and they're like, and? Unataka nifanye? But I'm just like that. Yes. Niko tu hivyo, niko tu hivyo, sani ifanye. Yeah. 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 The yeah. Way I am. <laughs> so you ask yourself a question, what am I accepting to? You need to check. If you're becoming an emotional stable person and your partner is not being bothered, hey, hey, she, you're crying, you're very bored, you're stressed, and this person does not bother at all, it doesn't give him a damn, something is wrong. And that thing as a end of Evans to hunt something is when some of the things that... Um, uh, used to give you joy, they no longer give you joy. When even your self, your self identity, it's become a question thing. Like you're asking yourself, who am I in this relationship? Kwani you? You start even questioning yourself worthy. Ni yeah. do? Mm. Why did I do to deserve this? The other person will keep on pushing to show you that something is wrong with you. But it's not that something is wrong with you. It's because they will never accept correction. They will never accept that they have wronged you. And they will never accept to amend all these solve issues. Mm. No time that you start talking to this person and like, hey, can we talk? And this person will walk out. Yeah. 
So if, if the both of you has to talk, they must be a call or somewhere, something. It is not even a talk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it has to be once, 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 once. And yeah. the person will come back and feel, okay, something mm. is wrong somewhere. And you know there's a term we also use called gaslighting, yeah. which is intentionally yes. triggering someone you're like but i'm not the problem yes, you're the problem. the problem so can you pinpoint exactly where i'm the problem and why should i accept that i'm the problem, I'm the problem yes. which is a form of gaslighting just deviating from the blame and giving it to someone else yes. saying but it's evans yes. but it's work yes. but it's the situation like that we're hear, in when you hear someone says how why did you slap me you pushed me yeah uh -uh. that is a red right. flag but you did mm. it that is a true, it's true. I don't know the key thing I love to tell my young people as, <coughs> as, as even we go to break is one of the key things personally from my own experience. If you see a land frog from dating, please Run. don't think it will, it will be better up there in that marriage. No, it just there ran. are things that will keep on repeating themselves until God comes and have mercy. Yeah. It is only him who can be able save to save us from that <laughs> or save the person. Yes, True. because those so key things. Because now the only, the only challenge we have with us to keep penda to na penda. Yeah. So even when someone is trying to show you like mm -mm, kuna kitu mali, you want to you, try. You want to try it. And I think I I like that you've said that you've brought up uh, several different points, yeah. and the way you're saying as women we like to. I can mm. make him better. It, no one is it perfect. It becomes a project. Nita Moja. Nita Moja. It becomes a project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by the so, time that project is... It's the women. Oh, it's so let us yes. take a very short break on that point. Mm. We will come back by addressing the healthy relationships and how we can understand if it's toxic, walk away, or what to do from that point. So stick to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing, and this is the Power Talk Show. Mm. <laughs>